everybody, Karen Roby and Daphne laprance Rangay here for ZDNet. We're talking uh, today about smart cars specifically and the potential for uh, cyber threats. What we need to know here, Daphne, is this something new that we're just uh, hearing about, it seems like? Right, so during during conference today in um, London, or this week in London, uh, representatives from the UK government were talking about um, the future of mobility, the future of smart connected cars, and they mentioned safety and particularly cyber safety as one of the key priorities in order to be able to deploy connected cars to our roads. Now that's obviously not just a UK problem, as soon as, I mean, as long as you're a car manufacturer and as long as you're connecting a car to the internet, if there's a connectivity, it means the car will potentially be um, a target of cyber attacks. Those attacks, they usually come in two forms, two main forms. The first one is the car gets hijacked, and so um, the, the hacker can remotely control the car or even disable the car. The second one is surveillance from uh, states and companies. So potentially those bigger actors would be able to know exactly where we're going, what we're doing, where our office is, where our home is. So again, not something that um, would be welcomed by, uh, by society as a whole. Um, it's not a hypothesis, it's something that has been looked at by researchers for a while now. As early as 2015, researchers demonstrated that they were able to remotely uh, control uh, the, the, um, the vehicle management system in Jeeps, and they were able to remotely control the car and disable the car and even um, control the, the car's brakes. Um, and then there have been a few developments since then. Um, mostly researchers have been able to show that a bug in a very common vehicle management system meant that they were able to unlock security features. So all these things have shown that cyber is a real threat, maybe not one that we've been talking about enough, but one that definitely car manufacturers and governments alike should be um, taking into account when thinking about the future of mobility and when thinking about putting driverless autonomous cars on the roads in the future. Yeah, that is pretty scary, Daphne. And obviously, more and more people are looking um, to buy these. So, what uh, what can be done, or what are they thinking that can be done at this point? Well, so as I said, governments and car manufacturers are aware of this as a problem. In the UK, as early as 2017, uh, the UK issued some guidelines to make cars, specifically autonomous cars, specifically um, cyber safe. Uh, so, those guidelines were relatively abstract they included things such as making sure that the, the car would be the car software would be resilient uh, even in the case that sensors started to fail uh, more recently the uk issued a code of practice for the trialing of autonomous cars and again sort of stressed the importance of making sure that those cars are resilient to cyber attacks but really the only way forward here is through research so through making sure that software developers programmers um, come up with the tools that will make sure that the software that we put in our cars will be resilient to cyber attacks. And again, research only happens through funding. So the UK government representatives that I mentioned earlier, they pointed to a recent um, investment from the UK government, 1.2 million pounds that were put forward for seven projects that were that are going to do in the future exactly this. They're going to come up with, or at least try to come up with tools um, to address this issue of cyber threats. But uh, to be quite honest, 1.2 million pounds, it sounds like a, a drop in the ocean. In the US, um, it's billions that are being put forward to make sure that networks are more safe. And that's certainly the way forward. It's certainly the, the way that we, um, that, that we will go forward in developing those new tools, especially if we think about the fact that there are going to be new vulnerabilities that we haven't even thought of that we can forecast because the technology is so young, so we're going to need these researchers, we're going to need a lot more funding uh, to make sure that the cars are resilient and safe before we put them on the roads. Yeah, and, and Daphne, you know, in terms of the um, the outlook of, or I guess for the future of autonomous uh, vehicles, something we talk about a lot, how does this impact it or, or how we see it will um, potentially hurt it in the future? Yeah, so there's been a lot of optimism about connected vehicles. There's been a lot of High. There's been a lot of upbeat, upbeat announcements about how imminent the technology is and how we're going to see and see driverless cars on our roads. So certainly this sort of makes it maybe a bit um, more of a distant prospect. Um, and another thing that's quite important to remember is that if these cars are not safe, users are not going to trust them. And if users are not going to trust them, they're not going to buy them. And if the cars are not on the roads, then the whole ecosystem of uh, connected mobility um, that, that sort of 
has promised, you know, an additional billions or trillions of pounds to the global economy every year, that's all not going to happen if users are not going to trust the cars. So it's, it's definitely a priority and it's a key aspect of the technology. We need to make these cars safe. We need to make them um, resilient to cyber attacks um, if we are to reap the benefits of the technology anytime soon. And if we're going to avoid entering a sort of winter of the connected car where we can see the technology, you know, being ready, but not being ready to be implemented in wider society. All right, uh, Daphne, we appreciate uh, that for us uh, coming from the UK here for ZDNet. And we'll have much more uh, on this in Daphne's article, which can be found, of course, on ZDNet. Thanks again for watching. Thank you.